Miami is a tale of two cities, rich versus poor. 24 hour partying, 24 hour vice, famous beaches, infamous ghettos, dangerous gangsters, innocent victims. Just 10 miles from Miami's world famous coastline are some of America's meanest streets. To take down the most violent criminals, the Miami-Dade Police Department turned to their special response team, known as SRT. SRT responds to any situation that regular units on the road cannot handle. When they run into trouble, they call us. We are the last line of defense. It's the beginning of the day at Miami-Dade Police Department. Sergeant Manny Malgore leads one of the three highly trained units that make up the special response team. Oh, Sergeant. How are you, man? Good, good, good late afternoon. Why am I here early, sir, and you're not? <laughs> Manny's boss, Lieutenant Calvin James, is SRT's overall commander. How you doing? Good. Everything good? Yeah. Good job good, last man. night, by the way. Thanks, you too. You too. Excellent. With violent crime ever present, the city is becoming increasingly dependent on its elite police unit. The reason why Miami-Dade has chosen to use SRT to execute um, most, if not all, narcotic search warrant is because of the uh, prop propensity for violence that comes with the field. Uh, usually when you deal with, uh, with dopers, uh, they believe in violence. They survive through violence. They're all armed. So instead of sending or taking the risk of sending a regular detective or police officer to these places to execute these warrants, the leaders of the department understand that it will be responded to in, in the appropriate fashion. Illegal weapons have become an epidemic in America. In response, police combat units like SRT have needed to equip themselves with the latest weapons and body armor. This is our bulletproof vest. It's got level 3A protection, which means it'll stop rifle fire, such as AK-47s and sniper rifle. This is our diversionary device, also known as a flashbang. Delivers an intense flash of light and a loud noise. It's used to divert the attention away from the entry team, and it's also used to temporarily stun the subject. This is our 9mm handgun. It's used as a secondary weapon in operations. A lot of the houses in Miami-Dade are fortified with uh, iron bars, security bars. Team leader will come up to the door, wrap the hooks around, give the signal to the driver, and the door will rip right off. This is our Halligan bar. We put this in the gap of the door, pry the door open. This is a 15-pound sledgehammer. This is our breaching shotgun. It's got a serrated muzzle. Basically, the breacher comes up to the door, places the muzzle right up against the lock, and blows the lock off. Next is our 223 carbine. It's our primary entry weapon, and it can also be used as a sniper weapon. This is our 40 millimeter multi-launcher, also known as a gas gun. It'll shoot six rounds at one time, and it's used to deploy either chemical agents or beanbag rounds, less lethal munitions. This is our 50 cal sniper rifle. This is a very powerful weapon. It's used for long range hostage situations. This is the round that it fires. It's got a maximum effective range of just over a mile. The night team now with what has become an all-too-familiar scene in South Florida, a gunman opening fire on a group of unsuspecting teenagers with a high-powered weapon.
Another day, another multiple shooting here in Miami-Dade County. And in this case, we have five people wounded after police say an altercation broke out inside this popular nightclub for teenagers. And at this hour, the shooter is still on the streets. One after the other, up into the ambulances they went. All of these young people shot early Sunday morning. This is the latest of several mass shootings in Miami-Dade County within the last few months. Just last Monday, three people were shot outside of club space in downtown. And before that, nine people were victims of a shooting in Liberty City that left two teens dead. On the streets of Miami, an AK-47 is cheaper to buy than a PlayStation. A week after the mass shooting, SRT have been tipped off as to the whereabouts of the fugitive gunmen. Melvin Gonzalez's Unit 10 wait patiently for the go-ahead to arrest them. We, we've been waiting here for about three hours, waiting to get the, the search warrant signed, or for the detectives, for that matter, to get the, the search warrant signed. But, I mean, sometimes we have to wait, we have to wait. Everything, all the legal aspects of it have to be done the right way. And then when we get the word, that's it. We get to, we're straight to business and we don't skip a beat. After five hours, the squad has been given the go-ahead to make the arrest. They must prepare themselves to take on gangsters willing to shoot on sight. I've had the misfortune of being present while two of my comrades have been shot in the line of duty. And, and there is somewhat of a sense of helplessness because obviously the, the act is done. Your, your partner is injured. And then everything, after that, everything that occurs after that isn't going to make him whole immediately. From police intelligence, team leader Sergeant Bert Perez briefs his unit on the suspects, the target address, and their plan of attack. This subject right here is a gang member here in Miami Gardens. They have somebody else in custody already that was the driver. Go ahead and pass it around. Nicknamed Jojo, six feet tall. These two gang members may only be 17 years old, but they have already shown that they are prepared to kill. Miami's South Beach is a resort that never sleeps. Known as America's Riviera, its Latino all-night party scene has lured the world's jet set. But just 10 miles from the bright lights of South Beach's impressive skyline is the dangerous area of Miami Gardens, where the special response team have met a few miles from the home of two members of the notorious 170 Boys Gang suspected of shooting five people. Both gunmen are just 17 years old, but are armed and highly dangerous. It's a one-story single-family home. The premises has a light color roof, and it's bordered by a chain link fence. The entry team is gonna be Mel with the shield, Cruz one, Flaco two, Majuga three, myself, Larry and Joe on twos, followed by George Caceres. Again, uh, subjects involved in uh, shootings and gangs, all right? And they're looking for a weapon in there, all right? And we're looking for subjects, okay? Every SRT warrant is meticulously planned. With such high stakes, Melvin believes that intelligence on their target is essential. In a situation like this, whoever has the most information definitely has more of an edge and more of an advantage. Uh, we've got numbers, we've got the element of surprise, uh, and we've got superior equipment and training. That definitely gives us the edge. All right, easy day, guys. Yeah. We have information that you're supposed to be badder or tougher or more dangerous than the average criminal out there, but you know what? You never know who's capable of, of doing what. And uh, you're always ready, as cliche as it sounds, you're always ready to expect the unexpected. You don't ever want to become complacent, because on the one search warrant that you become complacent, that's the one where Godzilla is waiting for you on the other side of the door. Yo, every day's a holiday and every meal a feast. Let's go eat. Just one mile from the suspect's property, the officers disembark from the truck and jump onto their armored vehicle, known as the Bearcat. Hey, 
hanging on to the outside struts, the team is able to assault their target as quickly as possible. Get on the ground. SRT systematically searches each room, looking for the gunmen, detaining other suspects they find in the house. Oh my God, oh my God. Y'all didn't have to break the door. Officer, why you had to break the door open? All you had to do was knock on the door and I would have opened it. Look at all of that. It's a mom. My oh, my, my God. Hey, hey sit down on your butt. Put your feet out in front of you and cross your legs. Oh, my God. What? What they got? All the crystal glasses, bro. Oh, man. Do you know how long hey, it took hey. my mama to get that break the house? From? Okay, okay, all right. We need you to stay calm, all right? Now, what we supposed to do? The entry team continue their search for the gang's main gunman, who's finally found in a back room, along with the ammunition he allegedly used to shoot five teenagers. Don't hurt him, please. Oh, God, don't hurt my baby, please. Oh, God. The job went absolutely as expected. It couldn't have gone any better. But he's leaving here with not so much as a paper cut, which in my book is a completely successful search warrant because everybody came in, everybody's going home exactly how they got here. And it's actually funny, now that I ponder it, serving search warrants in the neighborhood that I grew up in, it's kind of like a good and a bad because, I mean, you come and you're coming for, coming back to your old neighborhood to serve search warrants uh, on, on people that are doing bad things. But at the same time, you get to reminisce a little bit and I remember the, the times and the days that you would spend playing kickball in, in these very streets. Nice. Are you happy about that, Larry? Yeah, perfect. Ongi. Excellent yeah. shot. After a successful night, Hammerman Larry reflects on a perfect door breach. Another win. I feel great. It's a great day. I had a nice tobacco, a nice uh, cigar before the warrant. It was a good night. Go home, give the kids a big hug and a kiss, let them know Dad got home today, safe. Uh, give the wife a kiss and a hug, and uh, call it a day. Start another day tomorrow. Two months after being arrested, the teenagers still haven't been charged, as no witnesses or victims have come forward to testify, even though a reward of up to $50,000 has been offered. Sergeant Ray Melcon returns from an intelligence gathering operation for a warrant to arrest another member of the 170 Boys Gang. In your opinion, is there a trend amongst gang members to recruit the younger and more vulnerable one? Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the trend has always been for, for the senior gang member to recruit a junior gang member because basically they're doing all the dirty work and the uh, senior gang member is, is getting all the proceeds. These poor kids are, are going into the life of crime, leaving a trail of, of disaster in their wake. And unfortunately, the only time they, they learn their lesson is when they, they get caught up in a, in a feud and end up dead or end up in jail. Ray believes that the only way to stop the rise of teenage gangs is for SRT to employ a zero tolerance policy. We need to show the community that we are going to do whatever is necessary to be the knights in shining armor to keep the street safe. We're not going to allow any gang member with whatever weaponry and whatever preparation they may have to supersede our authority. I don't care whatever a gang member or crew brings to the table. I don't care if they bring additional weaponry or their planning force. We've planned for the worst contingency and we're gonna come out with success and as winners.
SRT are responsible for handling high-risk arrests for most of Miami-Dade County, an area of over 2,000 square miles. There's rarely a need for them around the famous South Beach. Most of SRT's work is focused on the rundown districts to the north of the city. In Miami Gardens, one of America's most violent areas, SRT are being briefed for the arrest of another member of the 170 Boys Gang. Pictures of the structure. Definitely, definitely orange. We're going to go uh, westbound 167th Street to 22 Avenue. At 22 Avenue, prior to the traffic light, we're going to stop, get out of the truck, board onto the Bearcat. Going to go northbound on 25 Avenue, our structure, corner structure, at 170 and 25. Joe, once again, once you stop, if we need additional help up front, we may have kids. I'll put you out up front as a babysitter so we can dump them off. All right, guys, let's go. Let's, let's beat the rain. As there are children at the property, SRT need to walk a fine line. They must hit the house aggressively to minimize their own exposure to danger, but also shield the children from harm. To make matters worse, these alleged gangsters are suspected of having assault rifles. Uh, what concerns me about this job is uh, the, uh, the, the fortifications, the history of uh, violence, and that it's actually a gang affiliation. So uh, there's mention about AK-47, which even though we always assume that, when they bring it up in conversation, it's actually more than likely going to be the case. And we're hoping that we don't have those kind of confrontations on this one. But we're always prepared for the worst. As the weather worsens and the light fades, Ray's unit climb onto the outside of the Bearcat in preparation for their surprise attack. How dangerous is the weather? Visibility is one. Two is the possibility of lighting in any one of these thunder And three, the maneuverability of the vehicle. So we don't lose the maneuverability if somebody crashes into us or we crash into somebody else. But these treacherous conditions don't seem to dampen Ray's spirits. In every crisis, you got to look for the opportunity. Obviously, we feed off the crisis. Cars up front, possible kids in the house. Car out front. Opens out. Search warrant! Get on the ground! It's okay! Get him out! Get him out! Get him out! The first priority for the officers is to get the women and children quickly out of the firing line before conducting their search for the suspects. We haven't done a secondary. Have a seat right down that stump. Hey! Hey, listen to me! Right, keep him over here by the tree. Right, keep him over here. Don't let him get out by the gate. You got any more? Now that all the suspect gang members are detained, the narcotics detectives begin searching everyone, even the children, who are often used to hide drugs. Miami Gardens PD detective Barbara Lee Palmer grew up in a neighborhood where drug dealing was commonplace. She felt compelled to join the police force. I've seen family go through that, and that's just, it's not, just not where I wanted to be. I myself, I was around it, and look where I am now, you know? Everybody is given an opportunity, be it small or be it big. It's just what they do with that opportunity that gets them to where they are. I try and give them the speech about if they get caught with this, their kids will get taken, and maybe they'll think twice next time when they do something like this. Unfortunately, you know, 60, 70 percent of them don't. And the kids get taken, but it's the price they pay. Wow, you're a big boy. How old are you? Four. Wow, when's your birthday? This is the type of job you can't do if you don't love it. It's very, very time consuming, very stressful. And 90% of the time, people don't say that they appreciate what you do. And uh, 
you, you have to love it in order to keep coming back every day. After a thorough search of the house, SRT and the narcotics detectives eventually find what they've been searching for. Uh, we found uh, indications of uh, money consistent with uh, narcotic sales, uh, some paraphernalia, and uh, firearms within the house. The main gang member is charged with possession of firearms and marijuana with intention to sell. The business of drug dealing is often seen as a ticket out of the ghettos. The drawback is that these criminals will often face SRT, who undertake over 300 drug warrants every year. The following day, SRT's Unit 10 are back in the ghettos for another narcotics search warrant. The team won't have far to travel, as heroin dealers are operating out of a house directly opposite the police station. Apparently, these, uh, these individuals have decided to sell drugs uh, right in front of a police station, which uh, makes them pretty brazen. I mean, there's not too many people that I would think would have uh, enough sense or common sense, if you will, as to deal drugs in front of a police station. So I don't know if they're really, really brazen and brave or if they're actually kind of dumb. Officer Melvin Gonzalez will be first to enter the target house, so he works the shield. This is our shield locker. This is where we maintain our shields. We have different level of shields. This is the standard shield that we use more often than not. The majority of it is consisted of uh, bullet resistant material. It's got a ballistic glass that allows me to see through it. It's got this plastic assembly that houses this light that I'll use to illuminate the path in front of us. In the back of it, it's got an apparatus here. It's ambidextrous, so you, it's designed to be held with either the left or the right hand. It's got a switch on an, off, an on and off switch here that sends electricity to the touchpad. And then when I push the touchpad, it activates, turns on, and turns off the light. Uh, it's simple technology, 5,000-year-old technology, a basic shield. When they threw rocks, shields were made of wood. When they threw arrows, shields were made of metal. Now bad guys throw bullets, so now they have to be made of Kevlar. As the drug den for this warrant is just across the road from the police station, Sergeant Bert Perez briefs his men around the corner so as not to draw attention to themselves. Search warrant, Hispanic male selling heroin approximately 15 feet across the street from P.O.B. This is 35 Street, P.O.B. is right here. Don't worry about it. A 30 second ride in the Bearcat, an SRT arrive at the target address. That's the house right there. Right All right, we got subjects running out the back. Subjects running out the back. Police search warrant! Uh, go. Go. The alleged drug dealers try to slip out of the back door, but SRT easily capture them. Uh, the job went as perfectly and as smoothly as we could possibly have hoped for. Uh, we came up, door was locked, our breacher came up, breached the door. I was the first one coming in with the shield. We went in, we went into the rooms, confronted no one there. All the bad guys were all gathered up trying to make their getaway at the back. Um, it went smooth, 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 smooth. One of the arrested suspects has a Tommy gun tattoo, usually symbolizing that he's the gang's executioner. A narcotics canine is released and later finds evidence of drugs. The gang are charged with possession of heroin and marijuana. This is where they're selling heroin out of. And like I told you, right across the street, we have marked police cars in our police station. What's up, boys? After the warrant, the unit returns to base. How are you? What's up, bro? Not much. What's up, Ferg? What's going on, man? Yeah, don't touch, don't touch him too hard, man. They might, they might, they might, they might explode. Working constantly in the line of fire, 
These SRT officers have developed a unique friendship. And the people, now you're gambling, darling! <laughs> what we like to do is just uh, sit around, talk, crack some jokes, and ease up the, uh, you know, the atmosphere. I would bet winner, and the people win, and the people lose it. <laughs> unit cohesion is the, is, is, the, is the best thing in this, in this, in this unit. It's, uh, it's something that we look for. Uh, in every in every operator, uh, if we have an operator that, that we can't get along with, then uh, it's not good for the unit. It's not good for our, for our squad. It's okay to have a different opinion, uh, as long as everybody's on the same page. Everybody takes care of each other. Everybody uh, watches out for each other. These officers are more than just a band of brothers. They've been trained into an elite fighting machine to bring Miami's most hardened criminals to their knees. You can send a, a pack of dogs inside a house and they'll search the house for you. Uh, but it's just a pack of dogs. Uh, it takes an operator that knows what he's doing, that's at season, that's, uh, that trains together from the oldest guy in the unit to the youngest guy in the unit. Uh, I would say that there will be a lot more police officers hurt in this job uh, if SRT wasn't around or if the county didn't have an SRT unit. I think it's a credit to our training that we haven't been, uh, that we haven't had anybody killed. On the streets of America, three million illegal weapons are seized each year and 17,000 murders committed. In the area of Miami Gardens, SRT has been called in to arrest a local rapper known as Dollar Bill, who's suspected of attempted murder. An SRT unit led by Sergeant Manny Malgore is already inside the house and Dollar Bill has barricaded himself in the attic. He's in the attic, he's in the attic. He's, he's, not, not, he's, not, he's not complying. <laughs> Whilst no Manny's team out. hold their positions inside the house, SRT's commander, Lieutenant Calvin James, oversees the operation. To assist Lieutenant James, a negotiating team has just arrived at the scene. Anthony, we're not going anywhere. Anthony, we know you're in there. No sense in hiding up in the attic. Take the cover off the attic, show your hands, and come down from there and do it now. You don't want us to tear up your friend's house. He allowed you to come in there for safekeeping. But we're not going anywhere. We'll do whatever it takes to get you out of here. Just for information, I've been uh, attempting to negotiate since uh, primary was complete with negative results. All right. That's the stuff. We're going to coordinate the burn boxes. Tell them to get ready to uh, coordinate the burn boxes with their negotiation. After an hour of unsuccessful negotiations, SRT decide to increase the stakes. A chemical agent is poured into the building to try and force Dollar Bill out of the attic. Come down from the attic. Come out with your hands up. Do it now, Anthony. Come out, Anthony. Do it now. SRT waits another 30 minutes for Dollar Bill to surrender, but he refuses to give himself up. With all their options exhausted, Lieutenant James gives the order to storm the attic. Take cover. Take cover. Okay, Manny, Manny, do a quick roll call, make sure all of our people are uh, kill you. According to SRT, when they entered the attic, Dollar Bill lunged at officers with a knife. In self-defense, SRT shot Dollar Bill. He died shortly afterwards. Obviously, the taking of someone's life is the most difficult thing you're going to have to face in this, in this job. If, God forbid, you're placed in a situation where you have to take someone's life, um, we 
we try not to take it personal. We try to, at least in your mind, uh, tell yourself you did it because you had to, you did it because you had to save someone else's life or your life, and, and not dwell on it and move on. To take down Miami's most hardened criminals, SRT has needed to become one of the world's best units at close quarter combat, as the consequences are severe. Uh, we had a, uh, one of our operators shot in December, uh, took a 9mm round to the face. Uh, prior to that, we had another operator uh, take a, a round to the hand uh, while he was take covering an exterior. We encounter sub subjects with, with firearms all the time. And it's only because of our training and, you know, the aggression in which we do our job um, uh, that, that keeps us safe and keeps us alive. We prepare by training, doing entries over and over and over. The movement inside a house, the room clearing, the entering the room, who's going to open the door, who's going to come in first, where is, where is the room laid out, how do you read that wall? When you find your footing and the rest of the guys know what it is, it's almost like a dance inside the house. Nothing goes wrong. Your footwork is smooth. The way you handle your, your weapon is, 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 is correct. You think you're going slow, but you're really not. It's happening rather quickly, and, and you're gathering a lot of information rather quickly, and that's the dance. We had an operator, uh, a seasoned operator, a veteran operator who came in and told us, uh, when you come in through that, through that front door, expect that those first three rounds are yours, you own them. So what he did was he took out his magazine and he gave us three rounds, just like that. And he goes, here, you hold them, they're yours. Coming out, coming out, coming out, coming out. It's how you react after you get hit with those first three, three rounds and how your team reacts after you, after you get hit and what they do that makes you uh, a great operator and makes your team a great team. You practice it, you rehearse it, you train for this all the time, but you don't, you know, you don't really know until game day how it's gonna, how it's gonna play out. Developing now this morning, police are looking for a man who shot an undercover officer at a drug lab in southwest Miami. Now, police say that the undercover detective was checking out a possible drug house last night here in Naranja when he was shot in the torso. The undercover detective is the third Miami-Dade Police Department officer to have been shot and wounded this year by gunmen. Policing in America has never been so dangerous. Every 53 hours, an officer is killed on duty. News of the latest police shooting in Miami has reached Sergeant Manny Malgore's team. My understanding is an officer's been shot. Apparently, uh, one of the narcotics guys just got shot uh, down south. For 272 Street and uh, 152 Avenue, we're trying to figure out what, uh, what exactly happened and if they have the subject in custody or whether he's inside the house. Last information I got, the subject may have run back inside the house, but we might be heading over there. Start gearing up. The unit is at a staging post preparing for a planned warrant, but this will now be postponed as SRT have been instructed to try and capture the gunman. Are you guys on? All right, the staging area for now is going to be 272 Street in the highway, 272 in the highway. How difficult is it knowing that you've got an officer shot? Well, obviously, my, my first concern is, is for the officer's safety. As a human being, it's, it's very difficult uh, not to want to seek revenge and not to see it's personal, especially if, uh, if the officer is a friend of yours or someone you know. It's very difficult. Um, but that's where the professionalism kicks in, and you got to let, you got to believe in the justice system and, and let, you know, justice take its course. Our job is to catch the guy. At the crime scene, the wounded police officer is emergency airlifted to hospital. On arrival, SRT immediately take control of hundreds of police officers. All right, let me get everybody over here. SRT, meet me at the front of the barricade. It's a 
supposed to be a Latin male. He, um, there were, there were, had some kind of surveillance on him, and as they approached the, the house, uh, the guy shot at the officer with a shotgun. He got hit in the face and on the side. As far as they know, he's still inside the house. They said just recently he turned off all the lights, okay. but they can see him moving around inside. That's all the information I got. Take it at face value. There's a good possibility he may not be inside the house, so heads up. If you set up on a perimeter, make sure somebody's watching your back, all right, because he could be anywhere around it. All right? Having no idea where the gunman is hiding, SRT's first task is to surround and secure the perimeter. But that's not going to be easy, as the gunman's property is situated in vast areas of open land. You want to take Bobuyo and somebody else with you and start working your way along that fence line to the three side. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to send Bert back there with about five or six guys and three canines and they're gonna sweep the field behind them. Once that field is swept and it's clear, we're, we're sure that the subject's not hiding somewhere in the field, then we can concentrate on the main structure. As it stands now, we've cleared the, the acreage that's behind us with came to make sure that there's no there are no subjects hiding back there. We've uh, been able to clear this small room that's here, turns out to be a storage shed. And right now we're gonna set up to contain the back side or the three side of the house. Is there any difference doing your job when it's somebody who shot at police or is it just business? Well professionally it's the same thing. I mean shots are fired, you know the guy's aggressive, you know he's willing to hurt somebody, whether it's police or not. But uh, I mean I would be lying if I was to tell you you don't take a little bit more personal, because you know, you're shooting at police, it's one of your buddies that got shot. So emotionally, it's a little bit more personal. As far as business, it's the same job. After an hour, the perimeter around the property has been secured. The next stage is for the negotiating team to try and start a dialogue with the gunman. Again, it's the Miami-Dade Police Department. There are officers, police officers all around the home. You need to come to the front door. Those of you in the house, we need you to exit the residence now. Exit at the front door. We've got the negotiation process going on, and uh, we're starting to plan for the, the tactical approach. If we don't get any answer from uh, from anybody from inside uh, within the next couple of minutes, we're going to go ahead and move up, pop the uh, the iron off the, the front, and and pop the uh, the wooden doors open. Anyone in the house needs to exit immediately through the front door. The negotiators try for 40 minutes to get a response from inside the house, but there's not a sound. SRT then wastes no time in adopting hard tactics. All right, LT, we're ready to go. They use the Bearcat to punch open the front door with a battering ram so that the team can see inside. There's still no sign of the gunman. So SRT use multi-launchers to deploy a chemical agent that causes uncontrollable streaming of the eyes, breathing difficulties, and disorientation. All right, let's go, gas, gas, gas. The plan is to give the suspect no place to go, but outside. Surprisingly, the chemical agent proves ineffective. To make the arrest, SRT have no choice but to enter the gunman's domain. There's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. A Miami-Dade police officer has been shot in the face whilst investigating a suspected drug dealer's property. The county's elite police unit, the special response team,
has been called in to arrest the gunman presumed to be hiding in his home. There are officers, police officers all around the home. You need to come to the front door. Knowing that the suspect has already shot one policeman, entering the house to arrest him is SRT's last resort. All right, let's go. Gas, gas, gas. So the team have fired chemical agents inside to force him out into the open. This tactic has so far proved ineffective, so Sergeant Manny Malgore's unit decide to increase the dose. We're going to set up a burn box on the one side, the room, as soon as you come into the front door, the first room on the right. Let's go, set it up. A burn box delivers a huge payload of chemical agents into the property all at once. How much CS gas can somebody actually take? Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of factors uh, in there. Uh, you know, the guy's tolerance has he been exposed to it before? People tend to build a tolerance after a while. Uh, mental state uh, on, on deranged people it doesn't work as well. Uh, you know, there's a hundred million things. Since SRT arrived four hours ago, there's been no movement inside the house. Manny then decides it's time to storm the gunman's home and find him. Now listen, the barricaded subject search, all right? There is no hurry. I don't want two or three separate teams searching three or four different locations in case we get into a shooting, all right? Let's do it. All right, I need points on the left. SRT carefully search for their suspect, room by room. But there's no sign of the gunman. Long into the night, the search continues around the outhouses and surrounding area. Eight hours into the operation, and there's still no suspect. But instead, SRT finds what the gunman was protecting. A clandestine grow room full of marijuana. Later that morning, the gunman is arrested 40 miles away on the other side of the city. He's charged with attempted murder and drug trafficking. This is a man that police arrested, Yo Padron Garcia. They say he was guarding a marijuana grow house. Garcia and the Silverado he was driving were found at a friend's house in Dania Beach after a manhunt by police. Authorities say Garcia was guarding a home where 129 marijuana plants were confiscated, plants worth more than $1.3 million on the street. Meanwhile, I have spoken with a number of Miami-Dade police officers. They tell me that Detective Diaz is going to be OK. We're live at Miami-Dade Police Headquarters, Peter Nance, CBS 4 News. Back at the Special Response Team's headquarters, Manny and his team prepare for another busy day. The subject that we were looking for last night, the one that shot the uh, police officer in the face, we were uh, there for hours uh, yesterday. Uh, we checked everywhere. And uh, obviously, we didn't we didn't find them last night. I just got off the phone and uh, got information that they picked them up in uh, Broward County last night. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who gets them as long as he's going to jail. And uh, now we're off for another job. <laughs>